Hi, this is Roger from CPAC and some very limited again. Uh, just a quick run through on your ideal Logic Combi. Uh, this is a Logic ES30. I uh, just want to take you through a few of the controls and understand um, how to set up uh, your hot water, uh, how to top up your heating, um, such and so forth. We'll start with the dial controls on the front. Now, this is the display which you're going to be using. Um, on the left hand side here with a tap, that's our hot water temperature. And if you set that up to a temperature that you're happy with coming out of the tap and then just leave it, that will do everything uh, automatically. No time control over that. It is literally just when you turn the hot tap on, the boiler fires up. When you turn the hot tap off, the boiler turns off. Um, so get that temperature set up to, to a comfortable temperature. Um, on the other side of the display, we have the heating temperature. Now, as you can see, there's a range between minimum and maximum. And around about two o'clock on the dial face, we've got E. Now, that's what uh, we believe to be the most efficient setting. Uh, it does actually just click and meet a bit of resistance at the E. Um, that's where you want to set it up to get the best efficiency out of your boiler. Uh, should we have a, a very cold winter period or cold period, uh, we can turn the boiler up to get more uh, heat out of the boiler. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be when it's, it's particularly cold. The rest of the time we can just leave it set on the E. Um, the dial next to that, we have uh, a hot water tap and a radiator commonly known as uh, winter mode. If we turn it into the hot water only mode, commonly known as summer mode, the heating won't come on regardless of what uh, controls you've got on the system. It won't bring the heating on at all. Boiler off and you won't get the hot water either. So generally you'll have it either in summer mode when you don't require the heating or you'll have it in winter mode when you want both hot water and heating. Now, should a fault cord ever come up in the display, you may need to reset the boiler to which you turn it to the restart. The display will go to a small minus symbol and then revert back to zero when the boiler's been reset. What the boiler do, you just reboot itself now, quite simply and, and easily described as the way you would just reboot a PC or a computer. Now, down underneath the boiler is where we need to just maintain the pressure in the system. Uh, we have the pressure gauge, mm, not the best located on these boilers to be fair, but to the left hand side we can see the pressure gauge. Uh, we generally want that between one and one and a half bar. And to do that, we have two taps, the two blue taps here. Now, what we want to do is turn the left hand tap so it's facing towards us. And then turn the other tap again so it's facing towards us. You'll hear water start going in the system and the needle will start climbing on the dial. Once you've got up to the desired pressure, turn both taps back into the original position, which is one pointing upwards and the other one pointing downwards. If for any reason you've not got this back in the right position, uh, you'll find when you go to the hot water tap that uh, no water physically comes out of the tap. Just come back to the boiler and, and just make sure that's in the right position. Uh, please don't touch any of the, the other taps uh, or else we'll end up isolating the gas or we'll isolate the flow around the system, which means the boiler will come on and overheat they all need to just be in the position where they're physically pointing vertically and then we shouldn't have any problems when we demand the heating or the hot water. Okay, well, uh, at times you may need to do that. Uh, you may see that the uh, hot water's gone off to your, uh, you know, uh, you go to turn the tap on and the hot water's physically gone off. Come check that pressure. You'll probably find that that pressure goes down at zero. Top up and you should be good to go again. Other times, uh, if you go around and vent the radiators, 
you're letting air out of the system, you're also allowing the pressure to go down while you're doing that. So whenever you vent your radiators, you would just need to come and top back up here at the boiler. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, if there are any more questions, please just post under the video. Thanks, bye.